Hello my loves, Tony here from Teal Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. Today is an especially dreary day here in Michigan. I found myself with nothing on my calendar and nothing on my hooks, so I'm gonna try my best to crochet a sweater in one day. Is that insane? Yes, but it kind of tracks with how I like to complete projects. Every single sweater I've made has been on some wild deadline and this one will be no different. And I'm sure you have a whip to work on as well, so if you're planning on stitching with me today, make sure you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. And before we touch any yarn of course we have to give some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor i do have a hot beverage today it's not coffee unfortunately it is my cough and cold elixir i started making it pepperoni you gotta be quiet baby I'm trying to pay our bills. My cough and cold elixir consists of ginger, honey, peppermint tea, and water. And this is what I like to use when I have that weird coughing fit that I always get somewhere between late summer and early fall. It happens without fail, so I always keep this stuff in the house. And today's cup of caffeine sponsor is Erica. And when donating, Erica said, Hi, Tony. I started my crochet journey about two weeks ago, watching numerous videos. And to be honest, I didn't think I would get it. Then I found your videos. I'm so happy I didn't give up. I absolutely love to crochet. Thank you for the videos and thank you so much Erica. This puts the biggest smile on my face because it's literally the reason I started my YouTube channel. I am so glad that you found me. Keep going honey. It only gets easier. Now if you like my videos and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows? I might shout you out in the next one. Now let's talk patterns. Now when it comes to patterns, of course we have a lot of options, but I had to consider that I want to start and finish something in one day. So so I wanted to go with a motif with a stitch pattern that I was already familiar with. And who to thunk it, it's gonna be Granny Stripes. I found this pattern called the Granny Pop V-neck Sweater from Michelle of MJ's Off the Hook Designs. It's really, really cute, definitely on the simpler side. It's top down, starts with a V-neck, and then you're just gonna join to work in the rounds for Granny Stripe all the way down the body. And then you pick up to work the sleeves, and then you've got some ribbing on the cuffs and collars. Nothing groundbreaking here, but a very cozy project that I definitely want to sink into today. My original plan was to start this project at 9 a.m. and it is currently 11.01 and the reason I'm starting two entire hours late is because I could not settle on colors for this project. Now if you're not familiar already I am coming out with a yarn called Happy Place in collaboration with Hobie and I have a ton of it here in my office. So I pulled two different color palettes because I couldn't decide between them. So I have Team Solid here and Team Melange here. So they both start with Almond which is this nice neutral color. It's definitely leaning slightly on the warmer side. Then here in the middle, we have yellow. So this is the same yellow, but this is in solid and this is in melange. They have a slightly different vibe. And then we have our wild card. So the third color in a palette, which is always my favorite color to pull. Now this hot pink is absolutely my favorite color of the entire palette, but I don't have anything to wear with it just yet. But then I have petrol, which is this gorgeous blue teal color, which I haven't used in a project yet either. So I'm obsessed with both of these palettes. I think this one kind of has a more muted, really wearable vibe, whereas this one just feels very tony. These are colors that I naturally gravitate towards. So the decision here is, will I go outside of my comfort zone a little bit, or am I gonna live in my bright, bold comfort zone right here? Now, as a Gemini, I can't make a decision like that, so we're gonna leave it up to fate by flipping a coin. I happen to have a shiny, bright quarter right here. I'm going to call this Team Solid, and this will be Heads, and this will be Team Melange, and that's gonna be tails. So let's flip this coin real quick. And I'm gonna try and do this without any cuts so y'all know I'm not cheating over here, okay? Why am I like a little bit nervous? Oh my gosh, okay. One, two, three. Ooh! Heads, ooh! Let's live in our comfort zones. Yeah, let's live in our comfort zones. <laughs> I'm really excited to use this palette. You know what? Love you guys, but you gotta go. You gotta go. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Yes, this is the palette, and this is going to be gorgeous. So this up by my face, kind of the top third of the sweater. Then we'll have yellow in the middle and pink at the bottom. I'm really, really excited about this. So let's grab our hook and get started because we are burning daylight, folks. First step before starting any sweater pattern is to gauge swatch. I always do it. Do not skip this step because I want to make sure my sweater actually fits. And she does her granny stripes a little bit different than I normally do. So I'm gonna follow this pattern exactly as written and see what I come up with. Set 
So guess who hit Gage on the first try? Spoiler alert, it was me. Yes, lovelies, I hit Gage on the first try. Unicorn, perhaps, mermaid, sure. I'm some mythical creature because that so rarely happens. So I used the exact hook that she mentioned, the exact stitch pattern, and I did meet Gage. Now, one thing to note, if you're ever planning to make your own sweater, and it's a thing that I see people do all the time, do not make your Gage swatch the exact size that is mentioned in the gauge. Typically, gauge is measured at like four to five inches, 10 centimeters or something like that. You need to make your swatch larger than that. My gauge was seven rows and like 16 stitches. So I made nine rows and I did like way more cluster groups than I needed to because you wanna measure your gauge from the center of the swatch, not from the edges because that outside measurement is just not as accurate as what's happening in the middle of your fabric. But now that we have our perfect gauge, we can finally find a comfy spot and start stitching on our sweater. So let's get it. Can I sit with you, Peppa Boy? Can I sit with you? Oh my gosh, look at you, you're so cute. Oh, you're my baby. Hey honeybees, time for a little time check. It is now 1246 and we are making some pretty decent progress. We're on row one, two, three, four, five. It felt like further than that before I said we were making good progress, but you know what? I'm gonna stick with my original thought. We are making good progress. We hit gauge, we're well into the increases on the neckline, and as you can see, we've got this nice little raglan happening. So if I put this around my neck, this is kind of how it's going, right? So these are the sleeve stitches, and then these are the front stitches. These two ends will V down and touch. So we're not quite there yet, we'll keep going, but I feel so bad on recording days like this because like my poor pepper boy is like, like official Velcro dog status, like follows me to the bathroom. Any room that I'm in, he has to be in. And unfortunately, he's also very scared of rain and thunderstorms. And last night we had some of the worst storms. So he barely got any sleep. He was up barking all night and just really, really restless. And I know he's trying to get some sleep today, but unfortunately mommy keeps moving the camera and moving around and he can't get any rest. And I'm like, oh, poor baby. Welcome to my new channel, Chronicles of a New Dog Mom. I don't know what I'm doing. He seems relatively happy most of the time, except when he goes to the vet. He like really hates it there. Probably because I'm not there. I get it, pup. That's my baby boy. Oh. So sweet. I'm gonna get through the rest of this raglan and then I will check in and try and let the pepper boy get a little bit of sleep. Quick time check, the time is now 3.28 and as you can see, I've lost my entire afternoon to this yoke. It always ends up being the issue that something in the yoke goes awry, but I look at patterns like recipes. If I don't like something in the recipe, I'm gonna switch it up and that's exactly what I did here. So I made some adjustments on how I did the increases on the sleeves to make sure I got the width I needed before this piece came together here in the center. But I did join here and I fastened off because I need to add some length to the back. So as you can see the back is significantly shorter than the front. I'm gonna put three rows of granny stripe on the back with no increasing, no joining for the sleeves just yet. I just need to extend the back some. Typically, you're gonna put some short rows somewhere in your raglan sweater. Some patterns will have you put it here right at the top before you even start working the front. For this one, since I've worked the front already, I'm just gonna put those short rows on the back here and then I can split for the sleeves. All right, darlings, the time is now. 355 and we have split for the sleep. We have split for the sleep. It's not perfect, right? I'm sure you can see in the back, we have a little bit of gapping on the back of the sleeve, but there is some instruction on how to do some decreases in the sleeves. So we'll be able to account for that. Hopefully we'll get done tonight. I think the whole idea of doing like a one day sweater might've been a little ambitious might have been a little bit short-sighted, especially considering that I always end up spending like half the day on the yoke. Even if we just get through the sleeves today, I'm gonna be happy. But before that, I gotta take prep for a walk. So I'll see you in a bit. One eternity later. <laughs> hey 
Hey honeybees, we're back obviously a couple days later than I originally planned on finishing this sweater. I think I'm just gonna put it on record right now. I am just never ever again going to say that I'm gonna finish a sweater in 24 hours. It's impractical, it's ridiculous, and honestly, my wrists will thank me. I did make some really good progress though. Yesterday was a bit of a down day. We went to this really fun one-year-old birthday party for my friend's kid, and oh my gosh, Mikey was so stinking cute. He made a total mess of his cupcake. We got to play around in the splash pad, in the sandbox and just have fun, take pictures, dance together. It was a whole lot of fun. So when I got back home though, I finally put the neckline on my sweater. Now y'all know how nervous I get about necklines and this one was no different. It just seemed way wide and the more I worked on it, the more I tried it on, it seemed like the neckline was getting wider. I did put the ribbing on it and when I tried it on, the neckline does still feel a little bit wide. It's just grading for plus size patterns is a lot harder than you think it might be. There are certain dimensions of the body that don't change at the same rate once you get to those larger sizes. So while I have relatively wide shoulders, like my yoke is on the shorter side compared to somebody else who might be of this same size. So the rate of increases down the yoke is going to sit differently on me than it is on somebody else. But let me step off my soapbox real quick because my sweater is actually turning out really freaking cute. <laughs> so, so far we have the yoke completely done. We've joined in the front, we've split for the sleeves and we have sleeved down down most of both of these arms. So the sleeve is done all the way down to where I wanna put the pink on. So the last thing I need to do is put on my nice hot pink. Oh my gosh, how cute is this gonna be? <sighs> I'm so glad that we went with this color palette. Mm. The fates were on my side that day. Now the reason that I did the sleeves first is because I want the line of the color changes to kind of line up with the sleeves. So I figure I'll do the sleeves first, and then I can see where the colors actually lay, and then I can do the body try it on as I go and make those adjustments to change the colors. So we've got another mostly unencumbered day. So I'm going to make myself some tea because I still have a little bit of a cough, a little, little bit of a cough and find something to watch. I think Shape Barton has another podcast episode out and I also jumped back into sex education. Oh, also another reason I haven't made a lot of progress on my sweater, there's a new season of The Ultimatum. Now, I don't know if you're one of those folks that love watching these ridiculous reality dating shows, but I am fully. If it's on Netflix and it's about dating, I'm gonna watch it. And this season is starting off so spicy. So if you haven't watched it yet, go ahead and put it in the queue. It is totally worth it because it is it is a mess from the get go, from like episode one. All right, loves, let's find somewhere comfy to sit and finish working on our sweater. Yeah, baby. We got sleeves, darling. We got sleeves. And they look perfect. Like, I absolutely love how they turn out. Oh my gosh, they're so soft just long enough. I got the cuffs right here at my wrist. I originally was gonna put them a little bit longer, but I actually like how it falls right here. Did a couple little decreases to give me a nice little poof. And once we block this, perfect is like not even strong enough of a word to describe how gorgeous this is gonna look. Like I can already tell. I mean, honestly, what, three, four sweaters in and like, I think I got this down pat. I keep feeling a little bit of weight about the neckline. Like clearly I have on a camisole here, but I'm not planning to wear this with a camisole. So it's gonna be like a deeper V, so there's gonna be a little bit more cleavage than I typically do, but it happened. I'm 99% sure I'm gonna make this sweater again. And when I do, I'm gonna lift up this neckline. I'll probably bring it closed right about here. This would be like row one, two, three, four, nine, 10, 11, probably like around 12. I left it at around like 16 rows on the yoke before I joined. And I think I could have gone a little bit higher. Honestly, it's yarn and I've been working on it for a cumulative three days. And that means I can make another one in like three or so days with all the other modifications that I wanna do. So this is my prototype. It just needs a little bit of tweaking. And also I just want you to know that I have also acknowledged that I am unintentional crocheting a sweater that looks like a pencil. And it is back to school time, so it's apropos. Maybe it's like top of mind for me, even though the pencils I use don't look like this. <laughs> but these do remind me a lot of school pencil colors, and I don't know, I kinda love it. I think it's super duper cute. Honestly, crocheting my own sweaters has solved so many problems for me. Like, you have no idea. I wish it could solve like climate change. It, it seems like it should be that powerful. But say la vie, I'm going to jump into the next season of sex education, work on the body of my sweater, and hopefully, by this afternoon, I'll have something ready to go on the blocking boards. Let's go.
Well, hey, honeybees, so welcome to day three of the sweater that just won't end. <laughs> but no, honestly, we've clearly made a lot of progress. Like, look, we're we're dang near at hip level. I just I stuck the extra ball of yarn back here. That's not my behind, but okay. Here's a sweater. We're about hip length now. We're just getting past kind of the thickest part of my middle. So I'm going to need to add ribbing to this soon, but let's do a quick recap of what happened between yesterday and today. Last time you saw me, I was kind of about here-ish. And then I added a little bit more of the yellow, took a quick little pick because it's super duper cute. I was really excited about the progress. Last night while I was working on my sweater, of course, we're chilling on the couch and we got a sighting of the elusive house panther, AKA Sheba the queen. She very, very rich rarely comes out to hang out with the whole family, but she did totally bless the project. And by bless, I meant like just kind of laid on it and tried to go to sleep. So clearly happy place is cat approved. <laughs> I was trying to finish my sweater yesterday, but I shut it down at 930. One thing that I started implementing is just stopping all project related tasks at 930. I typically go to bed about 10, 1030. So I leave a little bit of wiggle room in the evening for just cuddle time with my husband or with my dog, or just like kind of letting my hands relax. It's about boundary thing that I started incorporating actually just a few months ago. And I have to say it helps me get better sleep. It encourages me to just have a little bit more quality time with the people and the animals that I love the most. It helps me put some healthy boundaries around this craft that I love so much. Now, as of this morning, I did have my weekly call with Hobie in preparation for Happy Place coming out. We've been doing weekly calls every Monday at 8 a.m., which I'm like, whew, I get it. They're based in Denmark, which is six hours ahead of where I am here in Michigan. So I have to wake up pretty early to catch them in the middle of their afternoon, but it was a really productive call. I got some great information about what the launch is supposed to look like. And we've just kind of firmed up all of our marketing plans leading up to the big day. Now, if you're not on the VIP email list already, and you're interested in getting your hands on happy place on launch day, I strongly recommend you get on that list, even if it's just for this week, because we're going to have a massive giveaway going on and I'm going to have an exclusive coupon code coming out this week. So make sure you get on that list. I've got the link down in the description, please, please do not miss it. I made some really good progress on my sweater and I was looking in the mirror and I'm like, okay, considering that I'm still gonna have to block this, like how much more do I want to put on the length of this sweater? It's fitting fine right now. I'm definitely looking forward to it loosening up a little bit, especially around like this midsection here. And to accommodate for that, I need to remember that I'm not gonna get as much length because I want to add a little bit of width to my project. Now the cotton and wool in here are flexible enough that I'm gonna get that good drape, but I definitely wanna make sure this is just sitting a little bit more comfortably throughout, you know, all my bits. So I'm going to add two rounds of the granny stripe to the bottom of the sweater, and then I'm gonna do a round of single crochet, and then I'm gonna do my applied ribbing. So I'm gonna go find a comfy spot, fill up my water bottle because I've had enough coffee already today, and let's finish up this sweater. my new sweater. <sighs> C'est fini, ends woven in, ribbing is done and gorgeous. 
And I have to say, I am pretty darn pleased with this. I stopped just above where I like my sweaters to sit, so I think this is gonna block beautifully. I'm gonna go with a steam block this time. Look, I learned my lesson, all right? I will never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever wet block an entire crochet sweater again. Not my size, especially not with any kind of like animal or plant fiber, never again. I learned my lesson, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out that previous video. It's up in one of these corners. But back to this beauty right here. So the very last step that I need to do is block this. I am not gonna believe labor this point because I'm ready to wear this as soon as possible. Let's get the blocking boards, let's get the steamer, and let's get to work. Goodness gracious, what a good block won't do. Honey, I just, every time I put on a sweater I've made by myself, I'm like, oh, I've never worn anything that fits this well. And the trend continues. Like, look at this. Like, it is just so perfect. Now, I'm somebody who's a little bit like weird about their upper arms, but like this fits perfectly through the sleeves. I also have like longer arms proportionally for my height. So being able to customize the length of the sleeves definitely helps. I love the way the sleeve turned out too. I like having that little bit of poofiness like right above the ribbing on the cuff. Like, oh my gosh, oh, just, I can't get over it. All things considered, I am giving this, I think I'm gonna give it an eight and a half out of 10 hooks, and here's why. I absolutely love how easy it is to customize and adjust this pattern. I think it turned out so cute in three colors. In the original pattern, she had one that was a solid color and then one that was also worked in variegated. So the idea that just about any yarn and any combination can work for this project, you can make it again and again and still have a sweater that looks different than the last one. I also love how different the take is on this sweater from like a traditional granny sweater. Like I've seen the bottom up and over. I've seen V-neck granny sweaters work from the side to in or from in to the outside, but I've never seen one that was like a top-down raglan v-neck. To be able to find a stitch pattern that I adore, a pattern that works it up well, and be able to use the colors that I love, it shoots to the top of my favorites list. Now I will say I did take a point and a half off because while this pattern is size inclusive, I feel like there are some adjustments that need to be made. I didn't even do my raglan as deep as the 2x size says to be. If I would have, this v probably would have been under my my boobs. Every size 2X doesn't look exactly the same. There might be somebody who has like wider shoulders or a deeper yoke than I do, but I don't know if it was as deep as what's written in the pattern. But all in all, it was an easy fix. And especially if you're working a raglan, you can try things on as you go. But what do y'all think? Like, I love it. It's giving Mrs. Lipsy, may I sharpen my pencil? It's giving first day of school. It's giving kindergarten teacher with the hair, with the makeup, with the super casual, like, I'm a cool mom, you know, like it's giving and I'm obsessed with it. I think that I could wear this just about every day. And I do foresee myself making this again. I'll probably go with the colors I talked about at the beginning of the video. But yeah, I just, I don't know. Every time I finish my own sweater, I feel like I've got like magic powers or something. Like I just did something that nobody's ever done before. Like making a sweater that absolutely fits me in colors that I adore in a time frame that totally works, like four days for a sweater, that is nothing. So yeah, I guess you can say I'm pretty darn happy with what I did here. If you haven't figured it out by now, my entire motivation for even making these sweaters is to convince you to finally make some clothes for yourself. You can do it in a short amount of time. You can use heavier yarn. You can pick a pattern that you absolutely love or one that you've never heard of before. Like experiment, have some fun with it. What's the worst that happens, right? I make a sweater I don't love and for four days, I worked on something that didn't end up working out. I frog the yarn back, I try it again. 
Like it's no big deal. Sometimes it takes getting over that hump. You know, maybe your first, second, even perhaps your third sweater doesn't fit perfectly, but you're still gonna have learned something from it. And I think that is worth the price of admission. All right, honeybees, just a quick announcement before we go. Happy Place is gonna be out this Friday. Please don't miss it. It's coming out at midnight Eastern time. I will be going live on my Instagram at 11.30, just as like a final countdown. Make sure you've got all the information, all the links. So don't miss that. And if you're not following me on Instagram, just go ahead. Like if you're only watching here on YouTube, you are missing a lot of the story. So make sure you're following me on Instagram as well. And if you just generally like my vibe, follow me in all the places. Teal Yarn Crafts on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube. Get into it. It's a vibe. Alrighty, my dears. I just ordered DoorDash and my cheeseburgers are here. So I'm going to go. I love you. Stay classy and I'll see you next time. Bye.